This video is sponsored by Mailgun. In the old world, work meant physical action. The more you worked, the more you produced. In the new world, work means output. We are judged by our results. To some, 24 hours is more time than they can spend. To others, it's not enough. How do some people do so much in such little time? They balance work and life and passion, and they get a full eight hours of sleep. But others watch the time fly by. They're looking at a blinking cursor. The days feel wasted. To work intensely for short periods of time consistently, you must free yourself from distractions. And once you start, whatever it is you want to do, you must keep going. You'll want to procrastinate or do something easier, but you must push through. To progress faster than ever before, you'll need to master the one thing that matters most. You must focus. Software engineering measures performance based on output, not hours worked. There's no clock in or clock out like in retail. You're not billing clients by the hour like in consulting, and you're not a lawyer on retainer. In many ways, no one cares when you work. And you might think that this is the best thing ever, but it's a double-edged sword. All that time is yours. You can nap or go out for lunch or watch TV. When I was just a software engineer, I could get by with some of the distractions and bad habits. I would just make up for lost time in the evenings or during the weekends. But this year, I started my YouTube channel, and now I have two jobs, which means every distraction takes away from either my software engineering career or my blossoming YouTube passion. And that's unacceptable. Today, I'll show you how I focus. Part one, prepare. What you do before you're in that deep, focused state of work is just as important as when you're in it. And it all starts when you wake up. And I'm not talking about the grogginess, I'm talking about the feeling of a new day. It's yours to conquer. Your mind is ready and fresh and focused. You just need to divert the mental energy to whatever task you want to accomplish. Things throughout the day will slowly chip away at your brain's capacity to focus, like your smartphone and errands and your job. And that's normal and to some degree inevitable, but you can control when these distractions happen. So first, I'd encourage you to start off the day with no interruptions, to essentially embrace silence. And this means when you wake up, you don't immediately grab your smartphone. When you're taking a shower, you're not playing a podcast. And when you're at the gym, you're not listening to music. And people do this naturally. All those people who wake up at four or five in the morning, they wake up when it's dark, when everyone is still asleep and there's no traffic. They're able to work out or code or read in complete silence. And that's why a lot of people feel most energized and creative in the morning. They can get things done before life gets in the way. Now, I'm not saying you should never listen to music or put on a podcast while you're driving, but on days I really want to focus, I cut out all the noise. You know why people get the best ideas in the shower? Well, it's not a coincidence. It's warm, relaxing, and a place where your subconscious mind can work freely. By letting your mind wander, you're accomplishing one of two things. You're either making breakthroughs, like finally figuring out the reason for that bug, or even better, the solution, or an amazing idea for a new YouTube video. I'm a genius, yup, I fixed the bug. Or you're letting your mind deal with all the other life stuff now. Like, who's gonna pick up the kids? And what are you gonna cook for dinner? And when are you gonna take the car to the mechanic? And if it's an extra long shower, maybe you can do both. The first is helping you understand what you'll focus on doing. And the second is allowing you to deal with potential distractions now. Either way, as soon as you step out of the shower, you're gonna write these down, as many as you can remember. And for all the life stuff, you're gonna try to deal with as many of them as you can before you start focusing. And as you anticipate all the life stuff and work through them, there'll be a lot of stuff you can't do now things that will require you to get up and leave the house. And for as many things as possible, I want you to schedule them ahead of time. And even better, I want you to bunch them together. Like if you have to pick up the kids, then go to the grocery store and drop off the mail on the way. Do them together. If you're working a job, you'll probably have meetings. And let's be honest, most meetings are useless, but you still have to kind of pay attention, so it's hard to do anything else. Well, I want you to schedule this life stuff around meetings too. So essentially you'll have continuous blocks of time where you're distracted on purpose. If done correctly, your calendar should have blocks of busy periods, of distractions, but then also blocks of white space, focus blocks. The important thing here is the white space should be stretches of time, no less than one hour, and I'd recommend two hours ideally. And then tell the world that this white space is your focus time. Block it off in your calendar, just call it focus time, so people will know not to bother you. Now that your mind is ready on like a meta level and you've blocked out time to focus, make your life easy. It's like if you're on a diet, you wouldn't put donuts on the breakfast table. Well, when you're trying to focus, get rid of all the temptations. Your phone is the most obvious one. Put it on silent or do not disturb, or even better, throw it in some other room. But there are also some other not so obvious temptations. For me personally, it's the vast internet. 
whenever I get slightly stuck or bored, I switch windows, command T, open a new tab and type in Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. And sometimes I lie to myself by saying I'm reading the news, but really I'm just procrastinating. Well, lucky for me, I have a dedicated work laptop and a personal laptop, and that's mostly by chance. Most software engineering companies will send you a work laptop. And I've been really intentional with the way I've set it up. I've made sure that there are no personal accounts. So even if I switch windows and type in Facebook or Instagram, I'm not automatically logged in. And if I did wanna log in, I'd have to get up, go grab my phone from the other room or my personal laptop, open up my password manager and read out some random alphanumeric string. And 99% of the time, it's not worth it. So this added friction has made me focus more effectively. It's essentially protecting myself from myself. All right, we've talked about embracing silence, letting your mind wander, scheduling focus blocks, and removing distractions. Well, I view many of these steps like stretching before a workout. The workout is when you get most of the value, but without stretching, you're more injury prone, you're not as loose, so the workout isn't as efficient, and I think focusing and these steps are the same. Without doing this legwork to prepare, when you actually sit down to focus, you're not as effective. Before I show you how to focus, let's talk about Mailgun, how modern companies work with email. And I'm happy to say we use Mailgun at Bolt. The platform's ease of use, world-class support, and powerful APIs empower smart development teams to reach real customers at scale. With Mailgun, you can send and track your transactional and marketing messages effortlessly. And through innovations like send time optimization, Mailgun will automatically send messages at the ideal time for each individual on your list. Today, Mailgun helps hundreds of thousands of companies and leading brands around the world to provide connected experiences and drive smart results. Through its powerful email API and intuitive email marketing solutions, Mailgun controls the entire email lifecycle from pre-development through delivery of over 240 billion emails a year for companies like DHL, Wikipedia, Toast, Lyft, and Microsoft. Try Mailgun today by using my special link, mailgun.com slash Now, let me show you how to focus. Part two, focus. We all crave that focused flow state where you have tunnel vision, everything is a blur. You're so consumed with your tasks that you don't even realize the hours flying by. It's one of the most satisfying feelings in the world. Multitasking is a myth. Even if you combine the outputs from both tasks, you're usually better off if you just did one task more effectively. And that's because of this idea called context switching, which we'll get to in a bit. So there's probably a bunch of stuff you need to do and it's overwhelming to think about and you wanna do everything now. Well, we're gonna start with one task first. And I want you to break down this task until it's measurable. And what I mean by that is we need to know when we finished, if we were successful in our goals. Like let's say you need to refactor a package. The measurable task will be refactoring a specific function and its tests. And if you're a software engineer, each measurable task should be its own pull request. So at the end of the focus block, you'll know if you did a good job, if you can send out the PR for review. Now, remember how I said you want to keep your focus blocks to about two hours long? Well, pick tasks that will take you one to one and a half hours. So even with unforeseen circumstances, you have plenty of time to get the task done. And for now, don't worry about the small quick fixes like a typo or changing the name of a variable or moving a file. These tasks don't really require mental energy, so you can do them some other time. Nowadays, I get impatient when my code takes too long to run or compile. You know what I mean. You hit enter and you have to wait a couple seconds before you see any errors or warnings pop up. Well, during that time, sometimes I pick up my phone or I switch windows and try to make progress in some other task, or I'm mindlessly scrolling through social media. Well, all these other activities require mental energy. Well, if you follow the steps above, you should no longer have access to your phone and you shouldn't be logged into any personal accounts in your work laptop. But what about other work tasks? Like you switch windows to ask a question on Slack or to respond to a message or to review someone's PR. These other activities also require context. Like what is the Slack message about? Or what are the details of the PR? You need some time to fully switch over from whatever you were doing before. In this case, compiling code and now switching gears to reviewing a PR. And more often than not, by the time you're figuring things out, your code has already finished compiling, but you didn't even realize because you're doing this other thing. And when you do finally return to your IDE to continue coding, you've forgotten what you were doing. It's gonna take you some minutes to get acquainted with the file and remember what you were building. And it's even worse if you were debugging because you probably had some mental strides towards the potential bug or an actual solution. And you've lost all that progress. It's like your brain is wiped clean. So instead of context switching to something that requires brain power, switch to something that doesn't like go outside for a quick breath of air or grab a sip of water or show your pets some love. So when you return and your code is finished compiling, all your thoughts are still in place. Think of yourself as single threaded. Do just one thing until you reach a natural stopping point where if you left and came back, you wouldn't need any previous knowledge. But sometimes life happens. Your neighbor shows up and rings a doorbell, you get roped into some production on call issue or your dog starts barking. 
And before you know it, your train of thought is interrupted or everything is still quiet and you're still focusing, but you've gotten to a point where you're stuck. You need someone to come help you. Like you've debugged for a couple hours and you haven't figured out the root cause. So it'll just be way faster if someone pair programs with you. Well, these are two different scenarios. In the first, there's not much you can do. It's unfortunate. The best is maybe quickly jot down what you were thinking. What I like to do is when I get up to maybe go answer the door, I start repeating what I was doing. So hopefully I don't forget it. It's like when you're trying to remember a password or a 2FA code. Hopefully the interruption isn't too long and you can quickly get back to focusing. For the second scenario where you've done as much as you can, but you're now just blocked. Instead of quickly switching to actually asking your question, jot down how much progress you've made, what exactly got you stuck and what someone can help you with. And even better, commit your code. You never wanna message someone, hey, I'm stuck, can you help me? You wanna send them over what you've tried, the exact error messages you're seeing and ask tactical targeted questions. They'll appreciate it and they'll help you way faster. But wait, before you actually message someone, since before you were already coding, working on a technical task, think if there's a way to switch into another similar domain, like maybe picking up a bug or another technical feature. The idea here is that you were already using your mental energy towards a technical task. So by switching to a related field, hopefully all that previous progress and neural connections don't go to waste. Then at the end of your focus block, you can do the bigger context switch out of this technical domain to Slack or messaging or email or whatever. And the great thing here is you don't only have to ask one question, you can send out all your different questions to all the different people. And you've essentially parallelized your workflows because while they're responding, you can just start a new focus block. So you aren't just sitting there twiddling your thumbs. Sometimes we lie to ourselves and say we're context switching because we're stuck, but really we're just bored or lazy or unmotivated. Like we've been debugging for 20 minutes and found the bug, but now we don't really wanna solve it. So we say, let's just take a break. We'll get back to this later. But you've gotta push back. You can't give in. You've gotta tell that little voice, no, not now. And you gotta keep pushing. It's like meditation. It's okay to have distracting thoughts. You acknowledge them, but you don't entertain them. Well, it's the same when you're trying to focus. It's okay to feel unmotivated or to want to get distracted, but you must acknowledge those emotions, but not give in. You gotta keep focusing. And the amazing thing is the more you say no to that little voice in your head, the easier it'll get. And before you know it, you'll be pushing the bounds of your attention span. You'll be focusing more effectively than ever before. And you'll be one step closer to the max amount of deep focused work you can do. Part three, relax. Any athlete will tell you recovery is just as important as training. And it's the same when focusing. You need to give your mind space and time to relax and rejuvenate so it's ready to focus again when necessary. And there's no right or wrong answer here. I'd probably recommend going out and doing some physical activity instead of mindlessly scrolling on your smartphone. But honestly, do whatever you need to do. After a long, busy day, sometimes all I wanna do is sit on the couch and watch reruns of my favorite TV shows. Cal Newport tells us we're only really capable of a maximum of about four hours of deep focused work a day. So work like a lion. Work hard and intensely for short bursts of time and then rest and recover. I used to think recovery was a waste of time, but my mindset has shifted. I view it as an investment now. It's essential if I wanna to continue to focus effectively, consistently. Everything I've told you in this video is me on the perfect day. And those days happen sometimes, but there are also days when I get nothing done, I'm incapable of focusing and I'm just lying on the couch all day. And that's okay too. It's just a part of the process. That's all I have. Till next time, cheers.